So you are welcome back and um, this is the third class food safety and food preservation. We've done the first class which is a general introduction to how we are going to learn in this course and then we've been able to touch the first, my first promise I've been able to fulfill it. Remember I gave you eight <coughs> promise, excuse me, I gave you eight promises. <coughs> I gave you eight promises when we were starting the course. So the first one was that you will understand the importance of balanced meal plan and you'll be able to prepare one that suits your nutritional needs. So, and I've given an assignment as related to that. So if you've not, be, not prepared your meal plan or you don't still know how to make a meal plan, go through the course again, do the assignment sent to me and expect a feedback after some hours. The second promise I made was that you'll be able to apply food safety practices. It's another thing to prepare a healthy meal. It's another thing entirely for you to eat it healthy. You might prepare a healthy meal, the ingredients are healthy, the way you prepared it is healthy. But by the time you finish it, before you eat it, the food is contaminated. So that's why we are treating this second topic which is which is applying food safety practices so follow me and let's get started now these are the correct methods to handle food the first thing is that washing of hands can never be an old practice in our kitchen organisms including bacteria serious bacteria that don't that don't even die when you boil them can easily die when you wash with soap and water and they can be present anywhere when you go to major food markets you buy all those things you know the markets are always dirty rotten food and all that you don't know you might have Pick to one or two organisms with your hands, with your clothes, with your body. So when you get home, the first thing is wash your hands. Clean up yourself, especially when you are coming from a food market. And then there can be fecal oral transmission also. And that is the male source of typhoid. Fecal means feces. There are microorganisms that can be passed from this thing. So when you go to the toilet and you don't wash your hands, or somebody that sold food to you went to the toilet and didn't wash his or her hands very well, there can be transmission of diseases. Then there can be cross-contamination too, just like I said, from somebody to another person. From you now to your children or to your, to your spouse or to anybody around you, most especially when you just when you are just coming back from the market like that and it's not only when you come back from the market just make it an habit immediately you come back home from anywhere you can get all these things on any surface even on your table in your workplace when you get back home ensure your home is sanitized by first washing your hands washing your legs making sure you are fine when your children also come back from school before they hit let them wash their hands if they can't even wash the legs let them wash their hands so it will allow you to maintain personal hygiene and the community also will be hygienic then it's a regulatory compliance when you are used to heat if anything comes we pray covid does not come back but when you find yourself in some places where all these regulatory laws are put to place they are in place and they must be followed you don't find it difficult to adjust or to adhere <coughs> to those rules laws and obligations what are hand washing and washing routines you wet you wet your hands with clean running water you apply soap and then you scrub for at least 20 seconds, rinse your hand under running water, and you dry your hand. Don't dry your hand with the clothes you are putting on. It's not always the best. Dry your hand with your kitchen napkin or with anything. 
hand if you are washing your hand wear in an outside place if you are not at home and you have to turn on turn off the running water when you finish washing your hand and you still use that hand to turn off the running water you have touched that surface again you have contaminated the hand again when you are going to wash your hand go with a tissue paper just bring the tissue paper from your hand use it to turn off the water of the tap and then drop off the tissue paper it's best that way you know you are safe you know you are safe all these organisms causing typhoid causing infections here and there that make brings down the, the body immunity are uh, easily transferred through all these things now and we ingest them through the food we eat this is the first food safety practice wash your hand before you eat wash your fruits too before you eat them we will get to that the second thing is that you avoid cross contamination especially from raw food to cooked foods some of us are so careless with the way we handle our food both on the shelf and inside our freezers raw meats raw poultry raw seafoods always separate them from foods that you are ready to eat in fact use separate cutting boards separate utensils separate plates for both raw and cooked foods avoid placing cooked foods on surfaces that you just that just, just previously put raw food without you properly cleaning and sanitizing the place then store your raw meat and, and your seafood on lower shelves in the refrigerator to prevent the juices or the water dropping from them dripping into the food you want to eat personally i prefer these raw foods like your meat your fish your seafood and all those things let them be inside plastic that is the best i don't even like their smell so i prefer they be in plastic let them be in a plastic it's better and dude that way if they are in a plastic either you place on top of your refrigerator or you place beneath your refrigerator it doesn't matter because it's not going to drip into your food how do you store food in your refrigerator i don't advise you use nylon nylons are good but it's not advisable when these things turns to block and you want to remove them from each other it sticks together and the nylon can get torn therefore your foods can pour and all that it's better you put them in plastic you just and leave your plastic even if the plastic has gone to the freezer by the time you turn off the freezer and you lift up your plastic you are sure that nothing has dripped off into another food item inside your refrigerator store your food at very low temperatures we all know that and then store them for recommended time frames don't put a goosey soup in your freezer for more than five months and then after six months you are bringing it out to eat it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense store for like maximum of two months store for like two months consume everything then store fresh ones consume store fresh ones and consume like i said your raw meat your poultry your seafood store them in sealed containers cooking temperature that's number four cooking temperature all your raw foods cook them very well cook them till, till they are done <coughs> we are still going to talk about best cooking techniques that will not make all the nutrients in your food to disappear so we are still going to talk about cooking um, cooking techniques that will not make all the nutrients in your food to, to, to just go away but before we get there ensure you cook at very high temperatures especially the 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 the, the meat the fish the poultry the all those things cook them at very high temperatures when also you want to reheat leftover foods also reheat them at very high temperature to ensure all bacteria 
or all microorganisms are dead. That's why you need to cook <coughs> at hot temperature and to also ensure that the food they are well cooked. How do you handle perishable foods? That is our uh, number five. Control the temperature like I just finished saying that. Make it at very high temperature. <coughs> Separate your raw food from your cooked food. Then package and store them very well. Then you thaw safely. What is the meaning of thawing? Thawing is the process of unfreezing your frozen food. The frozen foods inside your freezer. How do you unfreeze them? The process of freezing is called thawing. So when you want to un when you want to thaw, thaw <coughs> under cold running water or in the microwave. Avoid putting them on the shelf, letting them defreeze on the shelf. Except if you are going to finish that day. And if that means you are not going to you know if you have excess water. That means you are not going to pour out the water. You are going to warm the food with the water. That's if you are going to defreeze on your shelf. By the time you pour any water away from your unfreezed food, you have poured out the nutrients. So if you are using microwave or cold water method, ensure that you cook the food immediately after thawing to prevent bacterial growth and to also prevent nutrient loss. Avoid refreezing previously thawed food unless they've been cooked thoroughly. They get spoiled easily now because they, you have exposed them to bacteria. Then you are putting them back into your freezer. They get spoiled easily. That's how to handle perishable foods and how to handle foods you are bringing out from your freezer. Now, you should also um, refrigerate your leftovers quickly. If you have leftover food, don't leave it for like 4-5 or five hours when bacteria would have settled on it before you put in your freezer. Maximum of 2 hours you've seen that you've not finished the food, pack them inside your freezer. Inspect your freezer every now and then. Is there any food you put you have put there that has stayed for a very long time? Bring them out, eat them. Ensure at least every two two months your freezer is free from old food. Follow food safety guidelines. Some food you buy, like your yogurt, they are food safety guidelines tested on those things. Follow them. Check for cleanliness before you buy street food. Some of us, because of the nature of work we do, we are forced to buy food from restaurants. Don't just buy food from restaurants. Personally, if I want to buy food from a restaurant, I will tell them, I want to wash plates. I want to see, go to the back to know how neat they are there. If, they, if the, where they wash plate is different from where they are cooking, no problem. I will see the kind of water you put there for me to wash the plates. So if the water is dirty and they see that's the plate, that's the water they used to wash the plates, I will have I would have used to see. If I was to eat the food inside the restaurant, a lot of things can dictate to you how clean the restaurants eat and check their food stall or their cart. Though with this, they are always neat, except for some exceptional dirty ones. Check for the ingredients they use. Sometimes you see the ingredients they've not. This won't be inside. Maybe they just bought it. Check. Check for proper food pep food preparation hygiene. You can we, by the, we, when you see the way they carry themselves in their restaurant, you'll be able to check one or two things. Check proper food handling. Check cooking. Check customer volume and turnover. Check recommendations and reviews online. If it's big eateries like. Um, like Mr. Biggs, like all these uh, big, big eateries, you can check for recommendations. But if, you, if it's all this mama puts and the likes, you can easily dictate their, their, their hygiene level when you visit their restaurants. When you have to buy street food, please ensure you are buying from very hygienic food sellers. You see, the contamination from water is the worst. Is the worst form of contamination ever, and it's very detrimental to the health. Avoid <coughs> raw or uncooked foods. 
avoid eating raw or uncooked food except they are nuts and fruits if they are not nuts and fruits and you are using your mouth to bite uncooked fish uncooked meat it's not so good use safe water use safe food sources some of us buying food ensure you are buying food from safe sources i will always say this i had my first miscarriage because i had contaminated fufu fufu made with water soaked fufu made with a cassava soaked in a water that um detergent was poured into i didn't know that's how the woman processed her fufu so by the way she soaked the cassava inside the water <coughs> she will pour detergent raw detergent very plenty detergent so that the cassava will soak <coughs> on time that's how she soaks her fufu and a lot of us buy from her the thing disturbed my stomach and my pregnancy came down save food sources that's why it's good to buy your food from trusted sources if there is anything that made me to go into food production it is because of my experience my first pregnancy heifer in my husband's house i i miscarried it i spent my first january 1st as a married woman in the hospital because of miscarriage i was opened up twice because of this miscarriage the doctor that did it the first time did not evacuate finish i was feeling stomach pain i went back to the hospital again they had to evacuate the second time you can just imagine the pain because i bought fufu of 10 of 50 naira so that's why i went into food production I want to control the, the hygienic environment of the food I eat and for as many that I can help out of the situation. So ensure you have safe water and safe food sources. Ensure your vendors are safe vendors. Some of us that just buy palm oil anywhere. Palm oil has so many contaminants now. Colonies, a lot of things are added. Please, let's be guided. Because of 100 naira, 200 naira, even if it's because of 1000 naira, that is extra from that ex that safe food vendors will collect. It's more good for you than putting your head at risk. Then manage your allergies. If you are allergic to any food, maybe you are allergic to beans and your other family members like beans. You have to prepare it for them, right? Manage, manage it. Manage your allergic. Manage your allergics. Manage it very, very, very well. Don't mix them together. When I got married, I hate meat. The smell nauseates me. I want to be a good, good. You, you understand what I mean? I will cook it for you, just that I won't eat it. I will have to use nose mask. It, the, the hand I use in washing the meat, I will not use the hand for like three to four days to heat any swallow food because I'll be perceiving the smell of the raw meat in my hand. The only thing that doesn't make me heat meat was the odor. I just dislike the odor naturally since when I was young. Now, I had to manage it. Some of us is not the odor, it's the prepared food you cannot heat. Just ensure you manage it so that you don't just put yourself in unnecessary in unnecessary problem when you eat foods you are allergic to you tend to fall sick you tend to have reactions you tend to have a lot of things so manage the food you are allergic to if other members of your family will take it learn just learn how to manage it the containers i use in preparing the meat the the, the pots everything i will put them outside and soak them in water so that at least all the holder would have gone and all that. I managed it very well. By, but now I'm getting used to it. Fine. But it's, it's more or less that I'm getting used to it. It's, it's a good thing. It's not that I'm forcing myself. Now I can pass in the market where they are selling meat. If I pass in the market where they are selling meat before, I will start vomiting. I will start vomiting. It's as bad as that because I'm so allergic to smell. If they kill, if cockroach enter the house, it is smell that we used to know. If there's cockroach in a room, if I enter your house and there's cockroach, I will perceive the smell. 
I'll perceive the smell, offensive smell, very strong. People used to say, ah, your nose can perceive cockroach. I said, yes, that's how strong my nose is. Many of us have different allergies like that. Learn how to manage it. Then interpret your food label. Look at the expiry dates. When the food is expired, please don't take it. Please don't take it. I work as a pharmaceutical chemist. Don't take expired food. Please throw them away. Look, don't look at any amount you use in buying the food. Don't take expired food. There is also something they call best before date. That is BBD. Expiry date is ED. Best before date is BBD. That best before date, that means that after that date, you can still take it, but use your discretion. You can still take it. It has not expired. Few days after, like 30 days, like 60 days after that BBD, you can still take that food. You can still take whatever is packed. But if you ask me, once the food, when, once they write the BBD to be today, I don't take it after that day. But what it means in the real sense of it is that you can still take it some days after the BB date. Storage instructions. Look at the storage instructions. Some of us buy drugs. The drugs will be inside dark bottles. We will, because of one thing or the other, maybe our children or something, something will just happen. We will pour it inside transparent bottles and put it just anywhere. We have spoiled that drugs. We have changed the composition of that drug before give, administering the drug to whoever will use the drug. So please, there is a reason why they coated Prastamo with that white. You can see that this is Prastamo. There is a reason why some drugs are coated in blue, whatever, blue cover. There is a reason why some drugs are coated in dark with dark substances there is a reason that is their storage instruction some some of these things once they they interact with light for just 30 minutes it has changed the composition of the drug that's why they are in dark bottles they will tell us to put in a safe place we will go and put on the freezer freezer that is in a cool place rather you put the drug on the freezer freezer that is be beside the window sun will come and beat the drug there the drug would have changed from what it, from the name where you bought it before you had minister then you say the drug is not working or the children will just develop resistance or necessary to the drugs and all that so please follow storage instructions when they say put in a dark place put in a dark place when they say put in a cool place, put in a cool place. When they say don't put on that sunlight, don't put on that sunlight. Then other, in, other labeling items like sell, sold by, display until, used by, all these things. Just follow, follow the instructions. Additional label information include ingredients, allergen information. If you, you might have this kind of reactions when you use this and all that. Nutritional facts too. Nutritional facts, the 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 the, the highest um, the one with the highest quantity is always named first. The then followed by the smaller quantity till the smallest quantity. But as a way of cajoning us now, there is a new method they use. Let's gram is more is more than milligram. Milligram is more than microgram. Now, let's say carbohydrate is 100 gram and the vitamin D is just 10 gram. But they want to convert that 10 gram to milligram so that you will think it's much. So they will write carbohydrate 10 gram. They will now write vitamins 1000 milligram. Forgetting that 1000 milligram makes 1 gram. Now, because you now see 10,000 milligrams, say, wow, the vitamin in this thing is much. Well, let me just buy. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you don't know how to read units, please go and learn. That's why you are in this course. Learn. Learn, learn, learn how to read units. But if you can still not learn, just know that the way it follows each other. Is, is decreasing to the highest one. The highest one is the first one. The lowest is the last. The lowest um, nutritional fat 
is the last one on any food label that you buy that's how it's supposed to be arranged let's move on now for those of us that don't that don't have freezer how do we preserve our food you can preserve by drying you can dry your fish you can dry your meat you can dry your vegetables but if you are drying vegetables don't dry under sun dry dry in a cool place it will get dried especially during a matan season don't put all that sun when you put on that sun you have killed all the vital chemicals present inside it like your mushroom too you don't you don't dry on that sun your pepper you don't dry on that sun the okra you don't dry on that sun all those ones you dry on that sun is a total waste it just you are just eating shafts you have dried off all the nutrients present in those things you can smoke you can oven bake you can ferment like your fermented locust beans like your fermented pap, sugar, and the likes. These are different preservation methods. If I should go in depth into it, it will take much of our time. The video is also almost going to 30 minutes. You can preserve also, also through salting, putting salt. You can preserve by pickling. That's what we use for it. You just add little salt, make together, and then you tie up and don't allow uh, moisture inside then you can preserve by canning that's what we use for pepper paste tomato paste i see did some when tomato was smushed and that's what i'm going to use to when this tomato whatever when the tomato uh, scarcity we hand i don't i don't usually buy tomato when it's scarce i have a tomato farm behind my house but that one is used maybe i want to just fly egg i want to just use one or two tomatoes i get them in my vegetable garden despite the fact that my compound is cemented i plant them inside containers i plant them inside sacks and they are doing well but the major one i use for soup those ones i've grinded them and i've canned them and nothing will happen to them in the next two three months they are fine you can also freeze if you have a um, refrigerator you can ferment your beverages something like your palm wine these extracts you can also ferment them now the last thing we are going to check i hope i can finish this one within the next three minutes so that this video doesn't exceed 30 minutes there are some safe cooking utensils safe cooking utensils your stainless steel is safe your cast iron those ones that this my coconut if you are in Yoruba land, that these mamas used to do, they are safe. They, they no, they, the cast irons, they pro, they, they provide additional iron into the diet, but they require special care to prevent rust and maintain seasoning. Your glass utensils, like your baking dishes, your measuring cups, they are non-reactive and they do not leach any chemical into your food. Silicon utensils, due to their heat resistance and their flexibility, they are also safe to use with most cook wear. The bamboo and wooden utensils, they are safe to use. Non-stick coated utensils, with a safe and intact coating, can be convenient for cooking certain foods. But once you see that the coatings are removing, just use your hand to remove all the coatings because that means you are going to eat those coatings with the food. And they are dangerous to the health. It doesn't allow food to burn, no, but when you eat them, it's not so good for you. Once you see that the coatings are getting removed, remove them totally with your hand. Utensils with copper or brass, li or brass linings, they are not considered safe for cooking acidic, acidic food. If you use it to cook acidic food, you are heating poisons. So that's the end of this class. If you don't know if your cooking pots are safe, snap, send to the group. I would, I will certify. Actually, cooking utensils that are safe are expensive. What well, there was a time I had a class like this, but not on my own personal group. I was invited to a place to speak, and they were all like, "Ah, I don't want to have cancer. I don't want to have this. Let's come together. Let's buy." I sold that, those items that time. We import directly from China. It was at a cheaper price. But that is if I have people that are interested. If you are interested in importing these 
safe cooking wares for yourself then we can come together to buy it will be cheaper and then you are sure that you, you don't have fresh ingredients and then you don't contaminate them with the utensils you use in cooking them let me round up by saying this everybody on earth has cancer cells i'm saying this with all authority it's left to you to activate them or leave them dead in your body you activate them with what you ingest if you ingest so much chemicals you activate these cancer cells you trigger them to start to, to, to you trigger them to life and that's when they start to communicate with each other and that's when tumor starts from you might decide to just leave those cancer cells dead leave them there useless till when god says your time on earth is over it all depends on what you hit and let me tell you watching or keeping what you hit safe is much much less expensive than taking care of diseases caused by not eating well thank you let me round up the class here i will send them the assignments for this class after now